Okay, welcome to another prepared 2.1 flight simulator video. And you can see here from the cockpit view that we are back in the uh, Raptor, so you know what that means. I guess they still haven't fixed this graphical glitch. When you go to the external view sometimes, it seems to take a while to, to, re to draw whatever vessel you're in. But uh, anyway, like I was saying, since we're here in the Raptor, you know that that means we're going to do a quick fly around. Let me go ahead and start the stopwatch here to keep this down to uh, around 10 minutes. This was requested uh, one month ago, one month ago today, in fact. Today's March 11th, and this was requested on February 11th that I do some kind of fly around of, I guess it's called Entebbe International. Let me bring up the world view in the airport, and I'll show you where we're at. Entebbe International in Uganda. Somebody said that this might be a cool place to go, so I thought, hey, let's check it out. And sorry, it took me a little bit longer to get to this one, but I had a bunch of uh, other videos already recorded. So I wanted to make sure I got all those uploaded first. Let me hide that menu bar at the top, and let's go full throttle and get going. First of all, let me touch my trim wheel to make sure that the USB device doesn't decide to reset mid-flight, so like it sometimes does. And let's touch the other control to make sure that it's all set. I guess we're good to go. So let's go full throttle here on the main. Or full throttle period. There is no main hover retro. So used to the Delta Glider XR2. It's actually been a little while since I spent any time with prepared. I've been really occupied with Orbiter. Bring up the landing gear and I'm just going to press the G on the keyboard because if I try to use the uh, try to use the uh, keyboard uh, mapping for the joystick it sometimes doesn't work I've noticed I've got a I've got one of the keys mapped so that it, on the joystick it should lift up the landing gear but it doesn't seem to always work so this was suggested because I had mentioned in a couple of different flights that I like mountainous type of areas in, in the flight sims because they look really nice and the person commented that he th I think he just said that he thought this was a mountainous area I don't think he said that it absolutely was and I think this same person, and I think it's AME1011, if I'm not saying your username right, I apologize. But I think he also suggested that I do a flyover of the uh, of Mount Everest, so I'm going to do that as well. Probably do that immediately after this video. If I can find an airport near there. That'd be a pretty cool flight. That should obviously be very mountainous. Should be beautiful to look at if it's, if it's well rendered. Let me see what my field of view is here. It seems like it's kind of wide. How do I look that up? I think it's a uh, shift Z. No, I'm not seeing the field of view there. And I don't think it's X and Z like it is in orbiter. No, it's plus and minus. There we go. No, I guess it's about where it needs to be. That's usually where I have it set, I think. Maybe in a little more. Maybe like that. I think about 0.5 is where I usually have it. Yeah, that looks like it makes more sense to me feels like I'm getting yeah I'm getting some wind here I can feel it on the vessel which is a little odd because I didn't set any kind of weather but I guess it just defaulted to something and we can see in the upper left I don't know well how, how well that red text shows up even though I even though I record these videos at 1080p it seems to me like some of the text in the video doesn't show up as clearly by the time it gets uploaded and rendered on YouTube so uh, this is a very pretty area at least and it's a good day i love I, I love like blue skies i live in florida and i absolutely love just going outside um on those days where it's just like crystal clear or where there's you know beautiful blue skies and just perfect like flawless white clouds i i love that and so flying around here looking around you know it just gives me that sense of just you know absolute perfection and weather big weather buff I, I hated the Illinois so much because I just hated the weather I couldn't stand the cold in the winter and I the summer sucked and the fall sucked and winter sucked or spring sucked I just couldn't stand living there I hated it so much and you know Florida definitely gets a little too hot for a lot of people's taste especially in the midsummer but it's no worse than it was in the stinking hot humidity of central Illinois but anyway enough about that looking around here Again, just all this blue sky and white cloud just reminded me of how much I love really nice weather. And we're coming into uh, spring here shortly. We just sprung clocks forward over the week over the previous weekend here in the United States. 
Uh, I don't know where all that's done in the world, but it's that's something we do here in the U.S. twice a year, play with our clocks. And we're coming into spring here in just a few more weeks, and uh, even though it's Florida and it's pretty much always nice, it's still something I look forward I look forward to because the um, the the sunsets, you know, or the you know we're going to be passing spring equinox and the days just get longer and I like that as well I really like that like in June July when you have those you know 8 30 9 o'clock sunsets I love that so I'm not really seeing too much in the way of mountains here or anything but it's a nice uh, sort of nice African savanna 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 not savanna but savanna at least I think this is Africa you get Uganda man I'm I'm not an I'm not a total idiot American. I do know my geography better than the people that you'll see like on those Jay Leno walk with me's or whatever he calls those stupid shows. I don't watch them, but I've seen a few bits on YouTube. So I kind of know my way around the world a little bit, but Uganda, I th I'm pretty sure that's Africa. So let's get down below these clouds, see what we can see on the ground a little more. Maybe throttle back a little bit so we don't overstress the uh, vessel as we descend. And I don't really know what I'm looking at otherwise. Just a bunch of plains and some rivers here and there, but there's really nothing that stands out as a highly identifiable landmark. Although I don't know that there really would be anywhere in Africa, except maybe like if you got over into Egypt and flew around the pyramids, maybe I'll do that. That'd be, that could be cool. See what that looks like. All right, so we're getting down below the clouds. Let's take a look over to the left, see what's out that way. Yeah, it's just, it looks to me like it's mostly just savanna type of terrain here. A few little small villages here and there and some kind of rivers. So nothing real significant to look at. the runway down there no just kind of building and obviously I'm back with just the standard headset here I don't have that track IR antenna looking thing mounted on my head I played around with it for a while and if you saw the last video the mountain hop video that I did um, there's some things I like about it but I don't know it's almost like it needs to be able to read my mind and shut off at the appropriate time and then turn on when I want it to because like when I'm looking when I'm doing these videos and stuff or even when I'm just using my computer on my own and not recording like when I look up like that to look into the camera or when I look up at my other monitor I don't want the forward view to shift but it can't but it can't know that and if I look over here to control my SciTech controller or if I look over there or something it just it doesn't have any way to know that I don't want it to track when I do when I do that type of thing and again, that's, that's, that's annoying even when I'm not recording videos. But when I'm recording videos, it's especially annoying because then I have all this movement in the, in the video, and I don't want that. All right, so we're here at about eight minutes already on the video. So let's just, uh, let's just look around over here. It looks like we're getting into some more, yeah, some more, you know, some drier, arid area over here. So we'll take a look at that. And then we'll go ahead and wrap it up because there's a, you know, again, I just want to keep these uh, fly around videos pretty short just so we can look at different parts of the world quickly. And if I knew my way back to the airport, I'd maybe try to land or something, but, you know, let's, uh, let's see if we can land here on the other side of this river just for fun. I think if it was control slash to put out the uh, brake, the air brake, the speed brake, maybe not, maybe it wasn't control slash. No, it's not control slash. I forget. Maybe control B. That's for that's for orbiter. There was a keyboard shortcut for putting out the air brake and the speed brake, and I don't remember what it was. Maybe it was control S. Nope, that's not it. All right, so we're not going to land. What we're going to do instead, we'll spend a couple minutes looking at the external camera, so you can kind of see what that looks like. And I, I think there would be less movement there if I had like a different frame. But I think the frame I'm currently set at, whoa, 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 bring up the throttle a little bit, I brought it all the way back. 
In fact, let's go full throttle so we can see what that looks like on the external view. See those engines really kicking in. Let's go straight up. Put in a lot of G. Alright, that's enough. Make our pilot sick. Let me see if I can pick a different uh, camera angle here from the external view. Not that. Eh, I don't really like that one either. See, I'd like a view like that, but one that... Uh, one that had sort of a fixed frame. See, in Orbiter you have, you, you, you got tar view target frame, global frame, and there's another one. Absolute. Why am I having such a hard... See, and just the way this frame is moving around, it's terrible. So let's just get back inside. So we're cruising over the uh, Savannah at apparently like 1,000 feet per minute or 1,000 miles an hour. I don't actually know what the uh, speed measurement here is. I do believe I have it on Imperial settings, so it should be based on, you know, feet, yards, and all that type of thing, but we should be over speeding if we're going that fast, because we're only at 4,000, 4, but man, it looks like we're just right above the trees. So maybe the elevation here is, uh, yeah, yeah, the elevation here must be pretty high, because, I mean, we're just barely above the treetops here. Gives you a sense of speed, though, at least. That's pretty cool. If we're not careful, we're going to clip one of these trees. All right, well, that was fun. Let's go ahead and end it here. If you like this part of the video, please hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed so you can be notified when I upload new videos, primarily Orbiter on this channel. It's my, it's my, it's a thing I enjoy the most, and it's what you'll see the most on this channel. Uh, if you have any suggestions for some part of the world that you would like to see, go ahead and leave that in the comment down below. And it may take me a long time to get around to it, but I probably will eventually. So that's it, and I will see you in the next video.